Sweet. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so excited to be here today to introduce Stephen Rowe, Director of Digital Training at the Leadership Institute. Uh, in his role at the Leadership Institute, Stephen has trained more than 18,000 activists in political and digital technology across the world. Stephen has been listed on multiple 30 under 30 awards. His work has been featured on Fox News, Fox Business, The Daily Caller, The Washington Times, Breitbart, The Daily Wire, and more. Stephen grew up in Montana, the treasure state. He is also a proud member of ACC's board. Please join me in welcoming Stephen to the stage to teach us about membership recruitment and digital grassroots. Thank you, Stephen. What's going on, friends? Yeah. All right. Best for last, right? That's what they say, at least. That's what I say. So I'm glad to be with you all. Happy Saturday. Hopefully life has been good. We have a lot to talk about, but before we do, just like to introduce myself. Before I do, did anybody go to my breakout sessions out of curiosity? Okay. Most people. All right. So for the people that went to my breakout sessions, if you could uh, laugh at these jokes again, really appreciate it. Um, I only have so many. But the good thing about politics is you, you don't have to be that funny. You just have to really try. And you'll take anything at this point, to be honest. And so almost everything is funny, which is great, because my jokes aren't that good in the real world. That's why I don't do stand-up and I do politics, roughly speaking. Uh, so yeah, just to introduce myself for a little bit while we get this presentation up, um, I'm originally from Montana, the Treasure State, which is amazing. Um, anybody else from Montana? Hey, yeah, represent, represent. Yes, there's not that many of us. There really isn't. And again, my apologies for those of you that already heard this, but it's the best context that I can give. The entire state of Montana is roughly the same size as Germany, the country. And Germany, of course, is one of the largest countries in Europe, and Montana's 6% larger by land size. And in that same plot of land in Germany, just a little bit smaller, there's 82 million people, 82 million Germans roughly. And in Montana, there's just one, uh, just one million people. And so it lends itself pretty well to a three to one ratio, uh, three cows for every human. Um, there were seven black guys there before I left. And now there's six, um, but really a beautiful state. And because you don't get to hear from a, Mon a Montanan as much as you'd like to, the one recommendation I have is Glacier National Park. It's jaw-dropping beautiful, truly spectacular, and it is just the most amazing thing that you'll ever see. Of course, I'm very biased in like what my favorite national park is because I'm from Montana, obviously. You probably have one that you love and care about as well, but I'm just saying, give it a shot, give it a chance, and check out Montana. So I want to uh, begin by introducing Leadership Institute, and then we'll hop into the content itself. Um, for those of you that are unaware, I am speaking on behalf of Leadership Institute. Our mission is to increase the number and effectiveness of activists in the public policy process. And as you can see on the screen, we get called a lot of names, but hey, they're pretty good names. And you know someone's a Leadership Institute graduate because they're likely the top activist, the top door knocker, the top fundraiser, the one who's making waves in their community. And so really encourage you to check us out. If you like what I have to say, um, you'll really enjoy a lot of our other, our other training. We teach the practical nuts and bolts of how to succeed in the public policy process. And today, I'm focusing on membership, recruitment, and tabling. I wanna make sure that your membership, recruitment, and tabling efforts are maximized. And then we're gonna walk into digital grassroots engagement. What it looks like to pull someone online into the real world, actually taking action. Whether that's to vote, to donate, to volunteer, to knock doors, whatever that may be. Uh, so lots to go through, and uh, we will begin doing that um, right after I see my Bitmoji. So like I said, I'm from Montana, uh, which is a beautiful state. And just a little bit more on my background on the political side is I work for the Montana GOP at the time, team captain, Bozeman engagement team, basically a glorified intern, knocking a lot of doors and making a lot of phone calls. I was just talking backstage, too, about I-360 and how much it's changed, because back in my day, uh, and I, I still make phone calls now, but really back then, you had like one terrible song that would like play all the time, and you'd just be stuck with it. These days, you can listen to Taylor Swift, you can vibe out in between calls. I mean, y'all don't realize how easy you've got it. And I never thought I'd be the person that's like, wow, back in my day, but here I am. Here I am doing that for you all. Um, so yeah, lots of fun. And 
I spent some time in Chicago, but then found myself wanting to empower the, co the conservative movement with digital technology. And so I, there was nobody else doing this. Back in 2014, I remember telling people, Twitter's like a big deal. You should care about this stuff. And thankfully, someone else was in the crowd. Uh, he's our now governor, Greg Gianforte in Montana. Uh, liked what I had to say, gave me my first chance, and I got my first job uh, inside college teaching uh, people in the political realm how to succeed online. And it's been a lot of fun ever since, and now I'm the director of digital training. I want you to think of me like your free digital political consultant. The generous, independent donors at Leadership Institute pay my salary so I can help out all of you. So let's keep this relationship going. Um, I have a social media handle, and I will convince you that I'm worth the follow throughout this presentation, but certainly keep this in mind. Robots, R-O-W-E-B-O-T-Z, it's robots, because I'm in tech, uh, and my last name is Ro. And for a second, I was gonna be a rapper, and I was gonna go by Death Row. I think that would have been pretty cool, but unfortunately, I, I don't have uh, insane rapping skills. Like, sometimes I'll play some games, and it's like, you know, try and rhyme two, two sentences together and it just doesn't work out as well as it should. Uh, so that's pretty tough and we're just gonna stick with technology for now. So everything's at robots. Let me, be, let me be a resource for you. I've got people who connect and ask questions in my DMs all the time. Feel free to do so. I wanna make your life as, as good as it can be. Now, let's go ahead and hop into the good stuff. Membership, recruitment, and tabling. And there's a lot to go here. And tabling is arguably one of the things that you see the most, but there are hidden secrets to success inside of it. The first time that I tabled on the campus of Montana State University, go Bobcats, I realized that I did not have the skill sets necessary to succeed. I had another friend who came, he worked at a different organization, I was just a college student for the first time. We went out, we tabled together. This man out tabled me. He had like twice as many contacts, a lot of good conversations. He handed out way more things than me. And I was like, what is your secret? And he said, you got to check out this Leadership Institute membership recruitment and tabling lecture. And that's what we're here now to do. So hopefully we can supercharge your efforts on a college campus or in general, because even as you leave college, you're still going to be tabling. There was plenty of tables happening in the exhibitor lounge, and you're still going to be presenting your ideas to individuals. And that always uh, is going to be an important part of your activism efforts. So let's go ahead and get to it. Now, I want to start with the typical pitfalls. First and foremost, club leaders do not know how to recruit new members, organize new recruits, or activate those organized recruits. Certainly, postering is not sufficient. You can put up a bunch of posters in your college campus, but that doesn't guarantee anybody's going to show up to your event. And in most situations, it's, they're not going to. Recruiting friends absolutely will not sustain your club. You may have started something, a great new ACC branch, but if it's just you and your friends, eventually it's going to start to falter a little bit. And each meeting has a smaller and smaller turnout. But friends, I promise you, there is a better way. And that's what we're talking about here today. Activity, the good stuff. And I think it's good to start with the a main objective. The main objective of tabling is to recruit students who are ready to be involved. The objective is not to do anything else. This is a full contact sport. Like you should be, maybe there's some cuts going on, you're sweating, you're huffing and puffing, you're like, whew. Yeah, 100 new contacts today, whew, I need a, I need a drink. Yeah, and, and you rightfully can take one if you had 100 new contacts. But a lot of people go to these tables and they're like, wow, let me sit behind this and do my work or start texting on my phone. And that is exactly the opposite of what we need to do. And the other big thing is when you're tabling with individuals and you are talking to people, again, most of the time, the objective of the table is to build up your team now, we do want to implement persuasion, and we're going to host activism events, and we're going to persuade a ton of people that our message is the right message. But before we get to that, we have to recruit a group of activists. And so our initial tabling is finding like-minded individuals. So we're not necessarily there to convince, to persuade, or anything of that nature, certainly not debate. We're trying to find people that already think the way that we do, that may have been isolated, and then we're gonna organize and we will then put on activism events that will persuade and uh, message to the rest of the populace. So let's look at some examples of failure before we look at examples of success. This is the Albino Squirrel Preservation Society coming to you from Texas. I think this is TCU. I know they're the horned frogs, I believe, but they actually were trying to protect some albino squirrels. Uh, and we see a table in front of us. Now, there's a couple things wrong with this table. 
Uh, first and foremost, the two gentlemen behind it uh, just really scare me. Uh, they just they just are not the most attractive people in the world. It's kind of like Napoleon Bonaparte, like that movie. I feel like that's who they are, and that's that's where they came from in terms of time. The table, it looks like you're going to get tetanus if you touch it. Like there's definitely some sort of like thing that is not okay to be having. So I'm not touching that table. Look at the duct tape on the sign. There's duct tape on that sign, right? It doesn't take a genius to realize that that does not look visually appealing. And then unfortunately with their name, this has happened to me before, so I'll give them a little bit of credit, but you know how you start with like a, a poster and you start with so much space at the beginning and you get towards the end and you just run out and you're like, oh, and let's just try and sneak in that Y. Unfortunately, that's what happened with their sign. Um, and there's just a lot going wrong with this table. But I think one of the biggest things that is one that you don't immediately recognize is that they are behind the table. Again, like I said at the beginning, tabling is a full contact sport. We're up there. And if you are behind the table, you are being passive. And we need to be proactive with our tabling. If I'm standing up, it's like good luck getting past me. I'm like a, 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 a really good sports player. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you just won't get past me without me at least saying hello to you, right? I'm gonna look you in the eye before you walk past me at the very least. And you do that when you're standing up. Unfortunately, when you're in the back, you're just playing and hoping that people will approach your tetanus-infused table. And unfortunately, these two gentlemen failed in their mission. The albino squirrel is no more. I'm sorry to break the news, and it's very unfortunate, but if they had better tabling tactics, maybe they could have organized just a little bit better. Let's take another peek at another example of a table, one that you see a lot on your college campus near you or just at any good uh, event. We're getting a little bit better here, but the black on pink, pretty tough to read. Those in the back, you probably can't see much at all. They're behind the table. Maybe they've got a little bit of candy, but at the same time, this is not getting to where it needs to go. Uh, we want our table to be as inviting and as exciting as possible. And unfortunately, they just totally, totally missed the mark. So let's start getting towards examples of success. But before we do, I've got one final example. And this is uh, the Democrats on campus. They're tabling, they're super excited. And that was their posed picture, but here's the real picture. Now, there's a lot going wrong with this photo, and let's start to highlight just a few of the things that are just truly, truly challenging about it. Uh, number one, uh, we have two people that are looking at each other and not engaging with the student who's there, ready to sign up. And it's very unfortunate. It's like you had that side conversation with someone you're more comfortable with instead of having a conversation with a new person that can join your group. Very, very poor practice, but you see it all the time. The other thing that you see is a woman on the table. Now. I don't know when it's appropriate to be on a table, but it's certainly not appropriate at this moment. I think the only time really is if you're in Vegas and it's past like 2 a.m. and there's no cell phone cameras, then you can stand on the table. But other than that, we don't do it, especially when we're tabling for our cause. She looks very, very, uh, how do I be polite? Awful. Um, some other things that are sticking out, another person. And this picture really is emblematic of all the mistakes that you tend to see when people are tabling. And this one's the biggest one your cell phone. It's so easy to get sucked in there. It's like, let me open that TikTok app. Let me just scroll a little bit. 30 minutes is gone. Okay, we tabled. We had a great time, guys. See you later. No, our objective, again, is to be actively recruiting students to our organization. And so there is no time for texting unless we are getting their phone number. And then, of course, you have the gentleman who wants to sign up in the middle, super excited and, and potentially wants to join, but unfortunately, between the woman dancing on the table, the man texting, and two people having a conversation to the side, I just don't know who's talking to him about the merits of this club, unfortunately. And the saddest moment of all, the saddest moment of all is this young gentleman with an earshot of this table who is not being approached with the message and is not being activated in any way, shape, or form because dancing on the table is a little bit too important. That text message that they had to send just had to get out. And unfortunately, now their group is getting smaller and smaller over time. This is a very ineffective recruitment table. So let's start looking at plans for success here. And here's a good one. Here's one that looks uh, great. Now, they're standing behind the table only because it's for the sake of a photo, but their entire day, they were in front of the table, huffing and puffing, getting a bunch of signups. And if your table is structured like this, you will get more signups, I promise you. And there's a couple big things that really stick out. Number one, if you look at the question, a very polarizing question, it says, do you think I deserve to live? 
If you're pro-life, you say yes. If you're pro-choice, you say no. But we're getting a quick answer from people in their heads extremely quickly. Before any of these ladies approach you, you already know that it's the pro-life group on campus. You already know what you're signing up for or what you're about to walk into if you approach this table. Amazing. Having signage at eye level, critical for success. And then, of course, they didn't necessarily use tablecloth or anything like that, but the table looks attractive. It looks like I can touch it at the very least, and that's always great. Um, we've got cool gimmicks and, and great swag to hand out, some, some, some fire uh, swag. Is that what kids say these days, fire swag? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I learned one recently, though. I learned one recently. People say bussin. Like, that's bussin. Yeah, okay, see, I don't know, maybe we don't use bussin. We don't use bussin, okay. All right, one more. Okay, I have, I, I have, I've got one more sample while I'm up here because this is how I, I, I gauge everything. And what it is, is pushing P. Are, are we pushing P? Like if you're pushing P, you're not selling drugs, apparently that's a good thing. Like you're, 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 vi you're vibing swag. Like it's supposed to be like a, a net positive. Yeah, I, I don't know how else I can get that one across, but uh, um, hopefully throughout this presentation, I'll be pushing a lot of P. Um, yeah, so just trying to get a little bit through the lingo, uh, trying, to, trying to fit in. I'm getting a little too old these days, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, these are all things that really uh, elude me in my mind, ultimately. All right, so let's go ahead and take a peek at another effective recruitment table. And we're getting a lot closer to success here. And there's some secrets here that I think really, really shine. Um, of course, we see the aspects that worked before. But what are the things that separate and make this table just a little bit better? Of course, they're in front of the table, but the secret is the clipboard. Because some people, when you table, you feel like it's almost like you have a lock and key, like your, 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 your foot is just like attached to the table and you can never leave it. But crazy enough, and I know it sounds wild, if you have a clipboard, you can actually just walk up to students or walk with them to class or do anything of that nature. And so you can be deadly with the clipboard. I've done a lot of recruitment, a lot of recruitment. And I've almost always recruited more people using a clipboard than using a table where I'm stuck in one place. Because if I have a clipboard, I'm up and going. I'm ready to roll. And again, this I'm late for class thing, great. I'm walking with you right now. Let's keep talking, right? And so clipboards are very, very effective. And most people don't use them anymore. I really challenge you to implement a clipboard and go more mobile. It's kind of like having a landline versus a cell phone. The table is your landline. Tried and true, works brilliantly, but that, that clipboard is a cell phone and you are mobile and ready to go. Some other big things that you need to think about when you are having an effective recruitment table. Number one is asking somebody a polarizing question. Asking them something that gets a quick gut instinct. And it depends on your organization, but there's a lot that we can tap into. And most of us here are tabling for the American Conservation Coalition. Hey, do you support Solar energy, do you support green energy? What do you think about uh, uh, the Green New Deal, right? We can ask polarizing questions very quickly and we get a response. That should be the goal. And then as we communicate with individuals, we should be acquiring their contact information as fast as possible. And it's important that we grab people's first name, last name, email, phone number. So full name, email, phone number. Those are the three most important things that we can collect from individuals. And think about it. A lot of people will just collect emails and will forget the phone numbers. But if I'm trying to contact you, like I need plans right away, am I gonna shoot you an email or am I going to text you or call you, right? And so we do wanna gather people's phone numbers. And for some reason, this is myself included, but people under the age of 40 are like terrified to make a phone call and just like talk to people. One time I called one of my friends and, 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 and he was like, why are you calling me? I'm like, because I needed an answer. Well, why didn't you just text me? I'm like, oh no, okay, I'm sorry. But when you get someone on the phone, when you get someone on the phone in general, you can feel them. And, and what I mean by that is you can sense if it's a yes really quickly, they're enthusiastic, it's a no, um, but it's, it's, it's regretful. Um, if they don't know anything and they may not be your, your ideal activist or, or person, you can sense someone on the phone way better than via text message. A lot of text messages will get sent to someone, then get sent to the text message committee, and then you'll get the perfect response back, right? And so if you get someone on the phone, you'll be in a much better position for success to recruit someone in general, but that starts with collecting their information. And for the single people out there, right? If I, if I find someone out there, I'm like, oh, wow, we're really connecting right now. Let me grab your email address. No, right? You grab their phone number. 
And again, for the single people out there, it's even crazier. Instead of going this text, 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 text thing, what if you scheduled a phone call and then asked them out on a date via the cell phone? It's crazy. It works really, really well. So not only is this a, an activism lecture, this is also helping a lot of relationships out there. And, and you're welcome for that. That's free. That's free. That's for you. Okay, so as you are using this effective recruitment table, um, we uh, are having a real conversation and notice that she's handed this student the clipboard before she started talking. Um, so now he can quickly sign that information up. You can give that uh, spiel, the elevator pitch that is really going to uh, do, um, hopefully just allow him to finish that process. Um, but he has everything in his hand, it's ready to go, and it's ready to rock. Afterwards, we can hand him some really cool apparel and keep the conversation flowing as great as possible. But really, after you have their sign-up information, we need to move on to the next person. Because tabling, we need to talk to as many people as possible. What it looks like, especially on college campuses, and even here, like when we have exhibitor hour times, is you're gonna get those rushes of waves of people. You know, people getting to their eight o'clock, their 10 o'clock, their one o'clock classes. And if you don't catch them as then, you're not gonna catch them for the rest of the day or until that like Monday, Wednesday, Friday when their next class is. And so we need to have these conversations happen quickly. Now, when it comes to having good first impressions, it's really important that you realize your first impression is you've spoken a book about yourself before you've opened your mouth. Before you've even tried to convince someone to join the American Conservation Coalition, someone with their backpack on 20 feet away, walking your way, looked at you and already has made a judgment about who you are. And so it's really important that we are presenting ourselves in the best way possible. And there's four components to a first impression that we can optimize for success. Number one is your static. This is your body. And unfortunately, and I, I, I hate to do this to you, but the answer is working out. And it's like, oh man, I'm at a political event. I'm feeling really good. Now he's telling me to go to the gym. But yeah, I mean, the answer is honestly yes. Uh, I want you to live a long life. You don't have to you know, look at me. You can look online, the studies, you're going to live a longer life, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna look better, and most importantly, you're gonna be a better version of yourself. So really encourage uh, working out and eating healthy, and uh, the, you know, Orange Theory, Soul Cycle, Gold's Gym, just going for a walk with a podcast, just put some more activity into your schedule. Uh, I will leave you there on that one. Number two is dynamic, and this is your body language. Depending on the study you wanna cite, about 60% of in-person communication is nonverbal. So again, as that person is approaching you, if you look nervous, if you look scared, if you're shaking, right, they're gonna be like, oh, this person's like really weird and just kind of keep on moving by. And so we have to focus on our body language. And that means a lot of times just standing up straight, having a smile on your face, being excited to have the conversation. And for my introverts out there, I realize you're probably not that excited to have the conversation, but you still should look excited to have the conversation. Um, but really factor in your body language. And this is across the board, right? What does it look like when you enter a room? The only thing that'll happen, and unfortunately, there's gonna be one poor soul, and you'll notice it, that's gonna walk through one of these doors. And when they do, everyone's just gonna and then that person just kind of looks at everyone and then like puts their head down and like tries to get like to the A to B as fast as possible. As soon as, as soon as someone walks through that door, I'll point at them and we'll all do it together. I don't know who it's going to be, but we're going to find out. Anyways, um, those are moments where you're making your first impression. So is your first impression cowering and running to your seat as fast as possible? Or is your first impression walking through that door confident and excited to be there with a smile? You've spoken volumes before you've opened your mouth. The third part is your self-presentation. And this is your style. And this just means looking good, right? You don't wanna look like a hobo. That's just the rule, right? Be a college kid. You don't wanna wear a suit on a college campus. Um, but in general, the rule of thumb is just go one up. So people wearing t-shirts, maybe we wear a collar. If people are wearing collars, maybe we wear a button down. If people are wearing button downs, maybe you wear a jacket. You know, and for the ladies, I trust you all. You all look beautiful today. I'm just not the expert in women's fashion, so I'll leave that one up to you. But make sure you look good, right? You have to be presentable so people will approach you. And then of course, your circumstance, the fourth and final part of a first impression. A famous billionaire once said, show me your friends and I will show you your future. And for the most part, that's absolutely the case. There's another quote that says, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And so who are those people? Now, most of the time, it's not necessarily making subtractions, it's making additions and spending more time with the people that are adding value to your life. I hate being dichotomous, but there are winners and losers in this world. And of course, I'm being dichotomous and there's much more nuance than that. 
but you need to surround yourself with winners, right? Uh, you need to surround yourself with people that are aspirational, that want to save the environment, that want to take action, that really care. And if you do, that's going to encourage you to be that much better yourself. And so spend time with the right people. And also, as people are approaching your table, the people around you are saying as much as you are, right? They're looking at the whole table. So who's there with you? One thing that we did back in the door knocking days, and I, those days are still these days, to be honest with you, for the right candidates, I love knocking doors. So we bring a, a male and a female uh, to almost every single door. It, and it, it, this is best case scenario. But again, if a male opens the door, the female says hello. If a female opens the door, the male says, oh, we got one. Okay, here we go. She crushed it. She did so good. All right, great, great, great. Okay, cool. All right, so anyways, uh, you, want, you want to take care of your circumstance. And one last thing I'll say on this is an example that was told to me by an older activist in Tennessee uh, named Bobby Petre. She's from Eagle Form, really incredible woman. Anyways, uh, she told me this story about crabs in a bucket. And essentially, this is a natural phenomenon in real life. If you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket on a pier somewhere, and there's one crab, because there's so many crabs in this bucket that can reach the edge and crawl its way out, as it begins to sneak out of the bucket, it's in the crab's inherent nature to pull that crab back down and suffer the same fate as the rest of them. No one gets to escape. Now, of course, we're humans, we're not crabs, but those same tendencies tend to exist inside human nature, especially if you're really starting to be passionate about anything, right? People start saying, oh, wow, aren't you uh, Mrs. Big Shot? Or, wow, look at you, like, aren't you a little bit too big for us these days? And things like that will tend to happen. You gotta get used to it, but your circumstance really will determine your success. And that also really applies to your group. If everyone there is a winner, is super excited, and is, is passionate about the American Conservation Coalition, it's going to be super exciting for other people to hop into that and join something that feels lively, that's growing, that's thriving. You're going to be in a situation for success. So again, before we start talking, master your first impression. These four components are all optimizable and make sure that you are speaking volumes. Now, let's go back to the table. When you hold a membership table, generally speaking, earlier in the semester and as often as possible, and we do want to operate the tables from mid-morning till 3 p.m., I've been on a college campus at eight o'clock in the morning. You've probably been on a college campus at eight o'clock in the morning. We both didn't want to be there, uh, let alone talk to anybody. And so unfortunately, the earlier, earlier times don't tend to yield that many results. In fact, you're best served, the real hot spot is usually like 10.30, 11.30, just before lunch um, is when you'll catch the most amount of people. And then we're gonna place this membership table or be clipboarding in areas with heavy foot traffic, right? We, Oh, wow, okay. All right, all right, have areas of heavy foot traffic <laughs> and we'll be in a really good position uh, for success. So I wanna give you a couple of table ideas. Um, and the first one that I'm stealing from other organizations that can be, I looked up, I looked this up online, you can actually get an earth-shaped free speech ball. And it was pretty reasonable, it was like 80 bucks, but for a club, and if you get student fees, you have a little bit of a budget, 80 bucks is great. So. These, these, these free speech balls, AKA Earth balls, for especially around Earth Day, would work extraordinarily well. Essentially, the gimmick of this whole entire thing is you have a giant ball, and that's really exciting. People will just gravitate towards it. For some reason, we have a weird click in our heads where we see a giant uh, balloon, bouncy ball, anything like that, and we just approach it. I don't know why, but that's just the way we work as humans. And people will approach you just because you have this type of attraction. And the other cool thing is this is reusable with like nail polish remover, Sharpie comes off instantly. So you can host this multiple times and then have people write what they love about the earth on your earth ball. What's your favorite ocean? What's your favorite national park? What's your favorite country? Whatever it may be, what's one thing you love about the earth? And of course the gimmick here almost is before you sign something on the ball, let's just grab your contact information really quickly. After you sign the ball, I'll tell you about the American Conservation Coalition, and we'll see you at our meeting later tonight, right? There's free pizza. Idea number two, change my mind. These work extremely well and will generate a crowd. Now, the secret behind a good change my mind is obviously the topic. Uh, and again, it's like the polarizing question. Now, this is just an example of Steven Crowder who made these very famous, but you can do them yourself. Here's a good change my mind. So like, the Green New Deal will hurt the environment more than it will help the environment. Change my mind, right? 
And you can go a, a bunch of different directions here, but you want to pick something a little controversial, something where there is a spirited debate on both sides, and then have that conversation, right? Maybe you think one way about car carbon dividends and someone thinks the other. Um, there's so many paths here, but just pick something that there's a good, healthy back and forth, and you've got a great change by mind. But now the people around you, because we have to have that one person in the seat who's willing to defend our ideas, Hopefully that's somebody who feels really passionate. Maybe it's the policy person. Maybe it's someone who just knows their stuff and is pretty smart, the one who took debate in high school. But the rest of the people at this table, when people are surrounding, and people will surround this table, I promise you, with the right change in my mind, it is your job to acquire everyone's contact information around the circle, right? And, it, and that's really important. The best way to do it is with the clipboard. Again, you can just approach people and just pass it around very easily, usher style for my Protestants uh, out there, uh, and you'll be in really good shape. So change my mind. One last activism idea, a membership table idea, that will complement your tables is chalking your campus. Uh, I'm, I'm pointing out an example that I saw that was really successful in Louisiana, and they had an event where they wanted to cut the fees. They looked at their student fees and said that these are too high. And to be honest, most of them are. I looked at our student fees at Montana State and it was like, what am I paying for? This is ridiculous, it's crazy. Um, but anyways, they wanted to lower student fees on campus, so they tabled, but before they tabled the next day, that night they went on college campus, on their campus, and then just chalked it, cut the fees, cut the fees. And then the one table is right, ask me about cutting the fees or we should lower the student fees, and people are approaching it, they're already primed to give their information, it's a great thing to do. Um, certainly check with your university, because some are very cool with chalking, and some are very, very not cool with chalking. Uh, so definitely make sure and check, but for some of us out there, this could be a great path forward. So those are three quick tabling ideas, other than just having a table in the right place with ACC merch. And your tables look really good, so you can lean into that, but there's other options out there for you. Oh, sorry, one more, Operation Grassroots. So <laughs> this is crazy, but if you actually put ryegrass, uh, if, you, if, you just, if you just throw it down, it'll grow. And so you can make it spell anything that you want. And people almost think that this is like a message from God at this point. It's like, whoa, <laughs> ACC meeting at six tonight, right? Yeah, <laughs> hopefully they show up, hopefully they show up. Um, but literally ryegrass and some string, and you can actually do some eco activism and really build things out. Um, where I see this best fitting, especially if you've got like a mountain or a hill next to your city or town or college, if, and, and a lot of colleges have that, they have like numbers or letters that indicate and represent their vigor and vim, something like this could work pretty, pretty well. All right, so let's go back to the table. We've got some ideas now. We're gonna be tabling. Those are some things to be trying over the course of the next semester and this one. But some important notes is number one, your table has to be unique. And you basically have to answer the question of like, what is your unique value proposition, your UVP? You know, why are you unique? Why should I join ACC versus joining any other group on a college campus? That distinguishing factor has to exist. And you also have to have a good answer. Like, why should I join your group? And hopefully you've got a good answer for that. Number two, just make sure you file the paperwork to actually create a group. Oftentimes you're gonna need uh, a, 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 a count, uh, like a staff representative who will endorse your group. I find that engineering like professors are tend to be the best people to ask there, but make sure you file as an official group. On most college campuses, again, pointing back to those student fees, you're gonna have the opportunity to fundraise through that and really encourage you to use those and leverage those to your efforts. And again, you don't need a table at all. What you do need is a banner or sign attracting people to your table, sign up sheets and pens, your candidate or club info, slips of paper announcing your next meeting, and then of course candy or other gimmicks to get people to the table. Pretty great. So banner, sign-up sheet, pens, candidate or club info, slips of paper announcing the next meeting, which is hopefully is the same day, and then candy or other gimmicks to get people to the table. Now, for a $15 Amazon gift card, we're all looking at this slide right now, right? What essential supply was missing? And let's go back real quick, just for a second here. Banner, sign, sign-up sheets, pens, candidate club info, slips of paper, candy or other gimmicks to get people to the table. Let's go here first. Nailed it, all right, sounds good, all right. Uh, you're, what's your name, I'm sorry? William. William, okay, William, I'm gonna find you afterwards and I'll, I'll grab your information, I'll send you the gift card today. Awesome, round of applause for William, what a winner. You did it, William. Just 
with great power comes great responsibility. $15 on Amazon, I could have a good time. I could have some really good time. In fact, one recent small purchase that I did that you guys don't need to know about, but I'm going to share anyways, is I had a like, it was like a fire pit thing. It's like sulfur. It's like a sulfur packet. And I went camping with my friends and you just throw the sulfur packet into the fire and it like changes colors. Oh, it's so cool. On Amazon, it was like eight bucks. It was amazing. So you still have, you still have seven bucks left after that. So you're, you're doing great. All right, great. Yeah. So the answer was the table. The answer was the table. And make sure that you have a table. We saw the first one, and that's not okay. And then, of course, make sure that we've got sign-up sheets. Now, more and more these days, you're able to use a tablet, a QR code, something of that nature. That's my recommendation, because to be quite honest with you, sometimes when people sign up for things and you have to like input that into the computer, it looks like hieroglyphics. Like I'm some Egyptian uh, paleontologist trying to figure out what the, way, the ways of the old people. But on a sign-up sheet, uh, what we do want to do, and this is one other quick life hack that's going to get you so much more information, is if you give someone a blank sign-up sheet, they will pick and choose which information they want to give you. But if you automatically fill out the first three-ish lines, maybe with just information from club members already, then the next person will fill out everything that the previous person did, almost every single time. It's a really cool life hack. And so I encourage you to start filling out your sign-up sheets just ahead of time with all the information you want to collect. And the next person that signs up will give you all that information as well. And then on the table, again, some additional things to think about, flyers, an organizational chart. And certainly at Leadership Institute, we preach this. Give them a title and get them involved. Titles are free. And so with your ACC branch, congratulations, you have positions available. And that person who's tabling or who just approached your table is a perfect fit for one of those positions. It's crazy how that works, right? That, that person looks like a membership recruitment coordinator. That person, you said you like social media? You're doing our social media. All right. You like communications? Write our press releases. This is our communications guy right here, right? And the cool thing about giving someone a title, especially a part of the American Conservation Coalition, is they're able to put that title on their resume. And if you can supercharge someone's resume, they will give back to you in the form of service to your group. And so if you can give someone a good title, nothing crazy, you can't call everybody CEO, right? You can't call everyone the chief operations officer of everything. Um, but give someone a good title that's going to stick out on a resume, and they're going to stick with you in your group for a very long time. Um, campaign material if you need it, membership cards, information, voter registration material, and decorations for the table. Make it look good. Make it look good at the end of the day. Okay, so then again, as we're at, students are passing by, we're gonna ask them a polarizing question and mention those positions that we have on our organizational chart. Do you stand up for sportsmen? Wanna save the bees? Quick, what's the na best national park, right? You're gonna stop people at that point and they're gonna answer you. And to be honest, not every single person is going to stop, but you're gonna get far more people than not with a polarizing question. And if you're just standing there smiling, they're just gonna keep on walking right past you. But again, that's why we're in front of the table too, ready to ask them that polarizing question. And we're almost always gonna get a response and that's a big, big thing. So we're actively soliciting new members. We are not standing behind the table. If you are in a chair at a table, that's lava, okay? We don't wanna to touch lava. Lava's, lava's evil and we avoid it. In fact, if I have a table anywhere and I see chairs, I just grab them and just, is this, is this a chair? Okay, it's a little heavy. I'm not gonna throw that one. <clears throat> <clears throat> I worked out this morning, so it's just a little sore. It's, that's why it didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. Um, anyways, <clears throat> okay, yeah, don't stand behind the table. Don't sit down at the table. If you sit down at the table, you are not getting as much signups as the person that did not, that did not stand at the table. <sighs> and then step in front of a passing student and we want to smile and make eye contact as much as possible. I just wanted to take ownership of that chair, to be honest with you. Um, okay, uh, smile and make eye contact. It's crazy how uh, de-arming a smile is. Hand them something. And sometimes I even said something to the effect of, hey, could you please throw this away for me? And they're like, what? And they look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, you looked at it? Oh great, ACC, you love my organization. And then, like I said, never sit and enthusiastically ask, uh, hi, do you like conservation? And if they say yes, Prove it, right? And we start that conversation and get to, their con get to their contact information as fast as possible. Now, you're gonna get a variety of responses from people. Number one is the ignoring response. I'm late to class, right? 
Uh, and, and these are kind of hard to overcome. Another one, yes, where do I sign up? And a conversational response, well, what's your group's position on X, Y, and Z? When it comes to ignoring responses, we want to move as quickly past them as, as we can, right? If someone says they're late to class, maybe we say, don't worry, this will just take two, second, two minutes, two seconds. They say, sorry, I got to go. We move, on, we move on to the next student. There's an enthusiastic response. Yes, where do I sign up? I'm so excited. Where have you been all my life? Oh my gosh. I'm like, whoa, slow down. Okay, this is a good club, but not that good of a club. Um, but anyways, anyways, uh, then we're, we grab the contact information as fast as possible and we move on to the next student. They may want to sit and talk, right? But we're going to push them to our meeting. We're going to have that conversation. I know you're passionate. I know you are. I can see it, okay? We're going to talk at the meeting and, and that's where we'll have that conversation. And then the conversational response. Well, what's your group's position on carbon dividends? What do you think about the Green New Deal? And really, most of the time, these are students that don't have anywhere to be, and they just want to have a conversation with you. And again, our objective is to recruit as many students as possible. We are, our objective is not to have a pleasant conversation with two or three people. It's to recruit hopefully more than 100 per day with our table. And so with conversational responses, we push it to the meeting. Why don't you sign up? You come to our meeting, we're gonna have a great conversation on that. We can even host an event later on that topic if you work with me. And so we don't want to entertain long conversations at the table. And then there's some rude responses as well. Get away from me, you fascist pig. Uh, well, okay, have a great day to you too. And uh, just kind of move on from there. Now, you're always a representative of your club, right? And so don't yell it back at them, but be polite, let them move on. And then maybe some persuadable response, like I don't know if I have time, well, what do I have to do? And you'll get this response a ton. Some of the best responses to this one is, you don't have to do that much. Wink, wink, we're, it's, it's a white lie. We're gonna get them to do as much as they possibly can. But you can only do as much as you want to. You know, No big commitment, why don't you just sign up and we'll move from there, come to our meeting, we've got free pizza, right? And then we'll get them signed up and ready to go. And before you know it, they'll be the next president of our organization. To be honest, that's what happens every single time. In fact, uh, one quick small story is I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed freshman walking through my campus. And at, at like every campus, there's an organizational fair, right? Where all the clubs, sororities, fraternities are all out there trying to recruit you. And I'm walking through and I see uh, a club and they recruited me. But the, I looked at it and I was always a supporter, but I wasn't an activist. I didn't really care that much. I kind of wanted to to drink and have fun with my friends. I'm a freshman in college, right? And they're like, all right, well, come to our meeting. And I was like, mm, probably not. Thank you, though. And keep doing what you're doing. And then they said, we have pizza. And I literally took that stop. I said, you have pizza? And literally went to that meeting, became a club leader, and then finally finished college as the president of that organization. And that started with free pizza at a meeting. So please do not discount free pizza. Very persuadable, very persuadable. Um, and a great thing to recruit people to your next meeting. So you're gonna have a lot of good responses out there. Um, but as people do sign up, if people are excited, they're enthusiastic, they wanna help you, have new members serve as helpers at your tabling because that's gonna be the best way they get associated with ACC. They're gonna hear the common questions, they're gonna be able to explain what that organization is over and over again, and they're gonna be a great ambassador of your organization. Have helpers sign up new members, and this is really important. So a lot of times what you'll have is the lead. You're gonna have someone like me who's crazy and super extroverted and wants to talk to everybody. But as I hook people in, I'm going to pass them over to a helper who can finish that sign-up process, who can kind of complete the, the full circle. It's a great strategy to do. Have someone kind of herd the cats and then get the contact information and then let them meow off. And uh, immediately suggest that they take a leadership position in your organization. Meow off. God, I did not like that. Ugh. Ugh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that one. But yeah, immediately suggest that they take a leadership position in your organization. And most of them will. It's going to be a really cool opportunity for them. Now, one last thing that I'll say on tabling is that uh, you should table with other people and work together because there's going to be other groups on your college campus. So research existing allied groups on campus, uh, share lists if possible. Easier said than done, depending on whatever organization you're working with. Um, but if possible, really encourage you to share lists. People can be a part of multiple groups, and that's totally okay. And then establish how working with your campaign slash organization is a win-win. We want to find allies on campus, because then we can work together at our activism events as well. And so we should be friends with people that we should be friends with at the end of the day. Now, now that you've done all of that, we are now hosting our first meeting, right? We got a whole bunch of new recruits. 
let's imagine that we were out there for a full day. We got 50 signups. We're feeling really good about it. And we told everybody to come to our meeting tonight. So I signed everyone up today and I told them the meeting is tonight and there's free pizza. So we got 50 names. Let's say that 10 people showed up. Now we have to hopefully recruit them fully into our organization. Our primary objectives in these meetings is to number one, fill in leadership positions and number two, plan activism. So what's the next event that we're gonna host? You know, maybe we have a cleanup day. Uh, maybe we have a, a really cool recruitment drive, but we need to plan the next events and have them be a part of that planning process and you'll be in a really good position for success. And some tips for conducting that meeting. Number one is we're gonna sign in everybody as they arrive. And as they sign in, now we can collect more information than their name, phone number, and email. Maybe now we're collecting their major, maybe we're collecting a Twitter handle or social media, uh, and just starting to see more of that individual and collect more information at that meeting. I always recommend starting on time. One of the worst things in the world, let's say your meeting is starting at six o'clock and it's like 6.10, and the person's like, well, why don't we just give it a couple more minutes? I'm sure one or, more, one or two more people are gonna show up. It just doesn't look as good as when you, know, you start at six o'clock and that person walks in late and they see that the meeting is already going, right? They're not gonna be as late next time, more than likely. So you'd be in a really good position for success there. Work from a prepared agenda and you can print this out ahead of time. You can create this for free on platforms like canva.com, super easy, but it doesn't have to be complex at all, but have a prepared agenda so people know exactly what's gonna happen at that meeting. Um, register people to vote if applicable and be enthusiastic. This should be fun, right? This is gonna be a really good meeting that we're all gonna enjoy together and it's gonna be awesome. So just a sample agenda, welcome, and hopefully we're gonna have a different person do the welcome every time. And so we had someone come for the very first time to our meeting, well the next meeting, we're gonna ask one of them to do the welcome next time, right? And now they're definitely gonna be at the meeting and they're more and more involved. Adopt a club constitution if possible and if starting a new group, Fill in that organizational chart of many positions. I don't care how many people are in leadership positions, you have more positions for people to be leaders in. Set the date and time and place of the next meeting and then adjourn. Super simple, just A, B, C, D, E. These, these agendas don't have to be anything crazy at all. So before I move into the next one, I actually wanna run through a quick example. Um, and I am going to ask for just two volunteers to come up here and help me table. Okay, we got one right here. Uh, let's go over here. Let's go on the left, yeah. So if you two wanna join me, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for coming up here. Let's see, does this work at all? Hello, hello, hello? No, it doesn't, okay. Could we get another microphone? Is that possible? Oh, they left me, it's okay. I'm the tech guy, so I can figure this out. Don't worry, guys, I got this. Testing, testing, testing. Oh, could we get um, one on? Perfect, okay, cool, sounds good, glad you're here. All right, yeah, it's really bright up here, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Um, so, what we're gonna be doing is you are gonna be recruiting me. You, I'm gonna be a student that's passing by and I'm gonna give you some of the responses that we went through and your job is to recruit me to the American Conservation Coalition. We're pretty ready to do that? Okay, awesome, well, let's just test this microphone, make sure we're good, okay, we're good. You wanna start first? Awesome, what's your name? Uh, Michael. Michael. Steven. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, Michael's up first. We've got Mike and Mike, actually. Yeah. Mike, 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 Mike. Guess this, what this day is a it is. This show now. All right. Well, uh, Mike, I'm going to have you come back. No, no, wrong mic, wrong mic. Mike, oh, this, I, now we've got too many mics. So we got so many mics. You holding the mic? We're good? Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to be walking past you. You're tabling for ACC, and you're going to just stop and talk to me and recruit me to your group. Awesome. You have a meeting tonight, tonight. and ACC is amazing. Okay. And if you hand me anything, it'll be really awesome flyers and, and promos. So Okay, and I have great creative control here. You, so you have I total creative control. Yeah, you just run with it. Awesome. I got an actor up here. I love this. Great. All right, so here we go. All right, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just walk past okay. you, and, and then you just go ahead and recruit me. Okay. All right. Do you think the penguin should die? The penguins should die, all of them. I hate penguins. They're my least favorite animal. They all deserve to die and burn. That's fantastic. So we're going to have a whole meeting tonight at 6, and you can, talk, you can learn more about how the penguins are dying, what some people are doing to, like, stop that. No, I, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop the penguins from dying. I want to encourage penguin deaths. I want more penguins dying. I think you'd be great at our meetings. I'd be great at your meetings. You know what? Everybody's You're down to kill penguins to with me. I've got, I've got a rifle in the back. We can go, we can go, we can go get some penguins. See... 
I think you'll learn more about why you like penguins. No, I'm pretty confident I don't like penguins. Do you like pizza? I do like pizza. Well, let's talk about pizza and penguins. It's uh, at 6 o'clock. It's an Olsen I don't know Hall. About, I don't know about penguins. Can, I, can we go and get your contact info? We'll send you some material. Uh, you know, here's the thing. What's the Penguins thing? are worst. If you admit to me right now that penguins are the spawn of Satan and don't deserve to exist further on this earth, I will sign that sheet. Okay. Penguins, spawn of Satan. Don't deserve to be on this earth. All right. Well, we're signing up. All Let's right. Go. I'll see you at the meeting. Free pizza. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I obviously gave him a very tough scenario, uh, which was not that great. Um, I honestly love penguins, for the record, so please, um, for the penguin supporters out there, I'm with you, I stand with you, and I hear you. Okay, so some things that Mike did well was he was focused on his meeting. He was focused on recruiting me. However, the only thing that I would push back on is just let me walk past. If once I'm the crazy guy talking about killing all penguins, we just don't want that person at the meeting, so we're gonna keep on moving. Failure was not an option. I here. understand that. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But some of the answers, if they're rude, we just let them pass by. So that's that's the lesson here. I'll give you one more shot because I, I like I like where you're at. All right, okay. but let's 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 go to the other mic yeah. just for the we'll just do Mike's back there. and forth. All right, I'm gonna give another potential response that you're gonna hear. All right, Mike, your job is to recruit me, but if I'm gonna kill all penguins, please let me go. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. I just gotta get in the I gotta get in the scene. Here we go. Ma. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right, here we go. Right. Hey, how's it going? Do hey, you so, do how's you it going? Pretty good. Do you oh. support the environment? Oh, I'm late for class, bro. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's walk and talk then. No, no, it's okay. No, all right, go understandable. Go Have a good all right. day. All right, all right. All right, so, no. Okay, he did great. He did great. This was the most ignoring response of them all. I was literally not going to give him any time of day, and he offered to walk with me. That's perfect. That's the best thing that you can do in that situation. I said no after that, and he said, have a good day. Honestly, the perfect response. All right, we're gonna get Mike back up one more time, and we're gonna go through one more response. I'm gonna be less crazy this time. So he's gonna be less crazy, so I should. I don't know, y'all you're, you're are scheming over there. I'm hey, kinda scared is, now. This is an organization that is gonna succeed. <laughs> we need strategy. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, so let me walk through one more time, same scenario, except I'm not gonna be the evil person, I promise. Excellent. Okay, all right, here we go. Cool. Hey, welcome to campus. Is Thank this your you. first week here? It's my first week. Awesome. Welcome. Have you found any organizations you want to be involved in? I love the environment, and well, I'm fantastic. looking for that. You know what? If you love the environment, we love the environment. Oh, my God. We have a meeting tonight. Wow. So if you want to if ah. you can go ahead and take this clipboard right here. Yes. Um, go ahead and put in your, your information all right there. All of it. Here is our welcome packet you, for oh, new thank students. You. It's all, got an entire social calendar. I hope you're excited. We're going to have excited. a meeting tonight. We've got pizza. We've got soda. We've got friends. And you can come learn all the, the positions that we've got available. So I'm in. Welcome to state. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah, go right. Hawks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get to class. Yeah, get to class. All right. Well, thank you both so much. Let's give them one last round of applause. Really appreciate it. Yeah, whatever makes sense. Thank you both, seriously. All right. So that was more fun than I thought it was going to be. I really enjoyed that. Um, and that was awesome. So there was a lot that went, went on there, but I think most of the time you see these responses over and over again. Hopefully you feel just a little bit more prepared for them as you encounter them on a college campus or just anywhere you're tabling. The last thoughts I have on membership recruitment and tabling is again, your goal, roughly speaking, if I'm giving you a real number and a real goal, is you should be getting 80 signups per membership table if you're tabling for more than four hours. More than 80 signups. And if you don't do that, you're losing to me. You don't want to lose to me. You want to do better than me. And so let's get 100 signups, 120 signups. Um, but that's just a good rough number to begin with. Okay, so I want to finish with the digital grassroots engagement and basically pull people off of social media into the real world. So the membership and recruitment and tabling was for the real world, but this is mostly for the online world. You're going to find that there's a lot of other application here, but this is primarily designed for that. And this is called the bacon method. Who doesn't love bacon? Bacon's amazing. Bacon's the reason I wake up in the morning and feel the love of God because bacon is just truly uh, his, his representation that he loves me. Um, but the bacon method is said that way just so it's easy to remember. And it's this. We are going to be building lists, activating contacts, connecting members, organizing data, and then we nurture those relationships. No need to write anything down as we are about to walk through these step by step and show you best practices, but this is the formula for success. If there's a funnel, quote unquote, for activating someone, this is it. We identify them, we activate them, we connect, we organize, and then we nurture 
that relationship. And so let's start with the B, building list, identifying who's on our team in the first place. By far, online, the best way to build a list is through petitions and surveys. By far, the easiest way to do it. And the secret here is choosing the, to the right topic because our objective is to swim with the current of online conversation and tap into existing interest around a particular uh, is issue area. And if I try and promote something that nobody cares about, then I'm not gonna get any signups. And so it's really important uh, that we have the right topic. How I start to find the right topic is I ask my friends, hey, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? And eventually you start getting these like gut responses from people and they're like, oh, I love that, I hate that. And that's how you know you've got something good. And it can be something they really like or something they really, really do not like. Uh, and then we'll just keep promoting that to more and more people and expand to other audiences. Here's a couple ideas on list building, petitions, and surveys. And these don't immediately apply fully to uh, the, oh, let me try and make them, okay. So the petition is, do you support, or I support nuclear energy, something to that effect, right? Nuclear, fantastic, who doesn't love good nuke? I do, and it, it's just amazing. Um, and so, do you support nuclear energy? Yes or no, compelling graphic, boom. And then you can sign the petition. Or maybe a survey, you know, what should be done about climate change? And then give people some options, option A, let market environmentalism go forward and thrive. Option B, make the government do everything and fix everything for us. Option C, uh, fill in the blank, and I'll tell you how we should solve climate change, right? Um, but we're gonna just offer these types of issues. And to be honest with you, if I just asked my friends on Facebook, if I just posted what should we do, uh, what should we do about climate change, I'm gonna get 15 plus responses just on a Facebook page. So we don't need a ton. One of the bigger misnomers here is that if we put out this petition, we put out this survey, only like five people are gonna do it, only like 10 people. Those are five or 10 people that can be a part of your organization. So this is a really positive thing. And then we promote to supporters who already follow you for feedback, like I just said, and expand. By far, the best thing we can do this for free is by using Google Forms. Uh, very simple, very easy. I know some people have, have reservations about using Google products, but this is the free, easy way to do it. Simple polls, dynamic surveys, you can post it on social media and be good to go. So let's imagine that I asked a really great polarizing question, use a Google form survey, and I got 10 people over the course of two days, which is not crazy, very easy to do, to get 10 names. So we're feeling really good about that. And let's put a bookmark in that for just a second. We were able to get 10 people with a polarizing question on our social media. Now, just to show you examples of this done at a high level, just for a moment, this is one of America's favorite governors, Christy Nome in South Dakota, uh, and she has an issue survey. And again, the issue survey, important, she wants to know what South Dakotans think, but what are they required to put in at the top? First name, last name, email, right? And so as we build these petitions and surveys in Google Forms or whatever we like to use, this is what we're gathering. Now, unlike where we already recruited someone and they came to our meeting, we're trying to get more information, if this is the first time we're interacting with someone online, it should just be first name, last name, email, and then phone number optional because what people will suffer from is survey fatigue. If I ask for five or six things from you, you're gonna be like, all right, I'm clicking away, I'm moving on. All right, I'm watching YouTube videos, okay, bye. So we want as little as possible, and then we'll get everything once we have their information. If I have your email address and I can email you, then I can collect more information about you than thereafter. The other cool thing is she's asking, what is the most important issue we should be handling? So if someone tells me the number one issue they care about is the Green New Deal, the number one issue they care about is nuclear energy, the number one issue they care about is solving climate change, well then it should be my job to mark that next to them. This is their number one issue area. And if you're able to do that, then you're able to target and segment just a lot more effectively. Like I said, a very high level. And we can just do this with Google Forms for free. Here's just one more high level example. This is Glenn Youngkin who just won in Virginia. Uh, and it's very simple. You see an advertisement that says it's a new day in Virginia, and then you click on that advertisement, and then it says a new kind of leader, and then email, zip code, join us. Again, super simple form, super easy. The landing page matches the advertisement appeal. So at a high level, that's what it looks like, but at a low level, we can still rock and roll with Google Forms. Just showing you what's possible for just a moment, and enlightening everything. But now that we've built a list of 10 names, through Google Forms and our social media, coming back at the bookmark, it is now our job to activate those contacts. 
And what does that mean? Make them active. And of course, I think one of the bigger mindsets that we have to address when it comes to activating contacts is the mindset of pressure, where some people won't contact other people, like you as the leader. And this happens to a lot of people, even candidates, who won't ask for money or won't ask for volunteers or won't ask for support because the people on the list, they, he feels like he wanted to give them space. Or if they cared enough, they would like volunteer already. They'd be part of my group. But I think that that mindset of like giving people space and being polite or generous is quite the opposite. In fact, it's almost assuming that people are too scatterbrained or, or not able to keep their commitments. If somebody, for any reason, has consented to you contacting them, right? We have gathered their name, phone number, and email, and they gave it to us, right? It is your job as the leader to reach out to those individuals. And I know it's not the most fun thing in the world, texting a bunch of people, phone calling a bunch of people, et cetera, but it's necessary to grow your organization and to grow the community inside of it. And so you definitely gotta know your list and you're gonna be recruiting from a lot of different places. We just use Google Forms, but you've got a lot uh, of options out there. You know, maybe someone clicked on your website, maybe someone went to an event and then signed up for your organization, maybe it was social media, but we know our list, it is now our job to make them as active as possible. And we're gonna push them through the activation funnel. Very complicated, it sounds complicated, activation funnel. Ugh. But no, it's super simple. Here we go. Call, text, and email. Super simple. We call everybody who's given us their phone number, and then we will text them afterwards if they don't respond. We are not gonna leave voicemails on the first pass. The reason for this is because if you call someone and leave a voicemail right away, I will assume you are calling me about my car's extended warranty and never get to that voicemail within any haste or any may never get to it at all. And most of us are like that. Unfortunately, I don't even own a car anymore. So I like, I don't know why they're calling me. I'm like, I don't have a car. Like, please leave me alone. Those spam calls are just out of control these days. It's really crazy stuff. Um, but anyways, so you call them and then you shoot them a text message. You prove legitimacy. You're like, I'm a human, right? Hey, this is Steven from ACC. You signed up earlier. Just wanted to give you a call and say hi. Perfect, they text back and now we have a conversation going. So we call and then text. We don't leave voicemails on the first pass. After you know somebody, you can leave a voicemail. Totally good to go. I love voicemails with people you already know. And then we will automatically email anybody from an online format. So if they signed up through our website or they signed up through our petition, um, we're gonna automatically send them an email and show them that we really care about them. Now, looking through this just a little bit more, I have it all right here. We're calling volunteer submissions and new contacts within 24 hours, which I know is not the most fun thing in the world again, but when someone signs up for your organization, their interest is at an all time high. And if you wait a week or even four days to contact them, their interest level is down here now. They're no longer as interested. And also when someone signs up and they get a response within the hour or within the same day, they know that this is an organization that's on the up and up. They're, they're, they're following through, they're committed, they're active, they're current, and you sense that. And so you gotta reach out to people who sign up quickly. And then, like I said, text anybody who doesn't answer and everyone you don't call. And then email automatically and anyone without a number. The other big thing here is just using creative persistence and not taking no personally. People are gonna say no to you. And for those of us that have not knocked on doors yet, this is uh, something that is not the most fun thing in the world. Rejection, feeling rejection. People keep saying no, they don't like my club. It's very frustrating, but I promise you, pushing through those no's and getting to the yes is amazing and it will feel really, really good. And the other thing is no does not always mean no to everything. No could be no at this time. It could be no to this opportunity. And so we can present or keep going based on what the response and what that no was. It's almost a little bit of sales training where you're like pushing past the no a little bit, but you do have to. And then also realize that some people don't wanna to talk to you on the phone, they just wanna text. Some people don't wanna text you, uh, they just wanna come up to the meeting. And so realize that everybody is different. I wish there was a perfect formula for success, but I do have this one. And it's activating contacts. It's pretty simple. Legitimacy, relatability, and then the ask. Hey, first name, everyone's favorite word in the entire English or any language is their name. And so we wanna use people's names as best as possible. 
It's Stephen at the Anti-Pulp Campaign. Thanks for signing up on our website. Relatability. As a fun fact, I am anti-pulp in mimosas. I'm actually okay with pulp and orange juice, but when I go to Bottomless Brunch and there's pulp in my mimosa, I start an organization. So it's, it's really a whole thing. Um, I hope you will join me in this crusade. If you see pulp in your orange juice at brunch anywhere in DC, I want you to contact me and we will, we will attack them on Yelp. We will, we will get them showing the wrong ways. Okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted again. When would be a good time to reach you about how to get involved? And this is important, the ask, right? We're leaving with the question mark. And when would be a good time to reach you about how to get involved? Notice that this text is not designed to get people to take action immediately. I'm not saying, can you, can you knock doors at 2 p.m. tomorrow? This text is designed to get people to respond quickly. And if I get someone to respond, then I can get them to keep responding with more depth and more openness. Hopefully get them on the phone and then close them, on, uh, close them via that. Um, but with your first text to individuals, make sure you're just trying to get a response. And again, for the people on Bumble out there, the people on Tinder and, and Hinge and all you dating app people, uh, le end with the question mark, please. Like, let's lead into the next thing. Let's give an, the other person an opportunity to answer. Again, you're getting so much good dating advice for free from me. You're so welcome. Okay, so a side note. Um, making, replace statements with questions because we need to be asking questions of people. You know, this is an amazing opportunity. But what if I said on the phone to somebody, doesn't this sound like an amazing opportunity? And now they're going to respond, right? Yeah, that does sound amazing. Now they just call it amazing. In their mind, they think this is amazing, right? And so replace statements with questions. One of the ones that you've probably seen before is the Wolf of Wall Street when they had that like sales call. And he says something that works extremely well. He says, sounds fair enough. Because everything's fair, right? It sounds fair, right? Yeah, it seems fair, seems reasonable. And then you keep going, right? So replace statements with questions. Ask W questions, right? And change that when and what as needed. But we're asking, you know, the when, the where, the what, all those good things. I'm still okay with how. The W's at the end. Uh, ask specific people to do specific things. And this is really important. And imagine this from just a perspective of, if I said that we need to do something to save this country, and now what if I said that you and I need to do something to save this country? It's up to us, right? When I said we, it's like, all right, well, someone else has got it, right? Isn't there a Captain America or somebody? Somebody's going to go save the world. But when someone's like, oh, it's you and I, like it is us here, like that's so much more powerful and you're more linked to taking action. And then if you text in a group chat, hey, could someone bring watermelon to the meeting? Uh, and then what if you said, hey, Susie, could you bring watermelon to the meeting, right? You're gonna get someone to bring the, 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 the delicious, delicious melon. Just incredible stuff. Watermelon's really good. Um, recruit is better than promote, raise awareness, get the word out. And then I also like enroll is better than convince, talk them into, get them to. I think a lot of people do a really good job at using words that are unnecessary because we're almost trained to do that. I remember my first paper, instead of saying, this is good, uh, and I had to get to the word count, instead of saying, this is good, I would say, and therefore, let it be resolved after examining all of the evidence, I found this to be the right course of action, right? Instead of, this is good. Same thing, so we're trying to recruit people, we're trying to enroll, we're trying to get them to take action. Now, some other things, just from the online component side of things, and I don't wanna get too technical by any means, but with someone who signs up, they should get an email back, right? You can do this for free with MailChimp, constant contact, super easy stuff. Uh, make sure you do. And then make sure there's a welcome email series, right? Because when people are joining your organization, they don't know what to expect and you need to tell them what they can expect. And it's kind of like getting an intern or getting your first employee. Do you just kind of let them do their own thing or do you tell them the lay of the land, how they can help, you know, what they can do and what success looks like? That's what we need to do for our activists as well. And that can be done automatically and automated through a welcome email series. And if people want to leave, if someone says unsubscribe, set them free. And if they love you, they will return. Um, but unfortunately, people will unsubscribe, and you need to get used to that. Um, not hopefully too many, but people will unsubscribe. Um, and email may not be the preferred communications channel, so we could try something else. So I just want to show you a quick example of a welcome email series. This is Elise Stefanik. She's uh, the Republican in New York 21. She's the GOP House Conference Chair. It's her job to fundraise for uh, Republicans in the House of Representatives. And so if you signed up for her text updates, uh, signed up for her email, excuse me, these are what you got. And the first one is signing up for text updates. Uh, today, I'm inviting you to receive special updates from me and my team. 
tap or click here to sign up for our Team Elise text messages. Just an easy first impression and an easy ask, right? Let me get your phone number, fill out the survey, what do you think about our club, um, respond with your favorite national park, anything of that nature. And then if they open that email, they're gonna get this email 24 hours later. Do you think Republicans will take back the House on November 3rd? Tap or click here to complete our poll. It's a segmentation survey, right? And based on their responses, I'm able to segment our list better. And so this person signed up online, they told me that they're most passionate about, uh, about electric cars. And so the next time I'm doing an initiative on that front, I can reach out to them with that issue area. A huge sign of success. And then number three, just a small donation ask. Please donate $5 at this critical time. We're looking for just three donors in your area. Studies show that if you get someone to donate a small amount of money, then you're gonna get them to donate much more over time. But one mistake of people that are online fundraising, and this is not an online fundraising course or, or training by any means, but just one quick snippet here, is a lot of people will ask for $50, $100 plus, and you won't get any money at all. But if you ask someone for $5 or just $1 to chip in, then they'll be much more likely to keep donating, especially if you can show them success. You donated $1, I was able to plant one tree. And I wanna plant another tree, and if you donate five more dollars, I'm able to plant five more trees. Okay, worked for me the first time, let's do it again. Now I'm donating $5. And I can keep that process and keep people donating over time. But you gotta get them into the habit of donating in the first place, and it starts with low dollar amounts. So again, we'll move on from that. Uh, and let's go to connecting members. <sighs> connecting members. So let's get a refresh of where we are. We built a list of 10 people for free, Google Forms on our social media. We have now called them, texted them if they didn't answer, and then emailed them automatically if they signed up online. And let's assume that we had a success rate of 50%. So now we've got five people. So we had 10 originally, we've called through, we got five people that are actually serious about joining ACC, they're super thrilled to be here. It is now my job to connect those members. And this is really important. We wanna, Facebook groups are the low hanging fruit. I know again, people go off and on about Facebook too. It could be Telegram, it could be Microsoft Teams, it could be Slack, it could be a bunch of different things. But make a group. There should be an online watering hole where all of your activists can come together and share in their brand loyalty. And then we'll introduce people uh, from the same town or backgrounds and acknowledge people publicly. Uh, it's a great thing. As a fun small side fact, uh, Don Bacon is still a representative in Congress, and of course I used him because this is the Bacon method. Ha, you see what I did there? Oh, okay, yeah, there it is. I love that. Okay, and uh, <laughs> the person, I kid you not, his name legitimately, he interned at LI too, Kenny Pancake. So I kid you not, Pancake went to go work for Bacon. Crazy, crazy. Um, but anyways, we're connecting these members. And if you don't have a Facebook group or an online watering hole for your local ACC club, that's the big action item right now. Make sure we create something online. Because when you do, you make people feel like the Avengers, right? They're all coming together and sharing in their talents and, 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 and time and treasure, all bringing unique perspectives to the table, right? Thor can't do what Captain America can do, what Hawkeye, is Hawkeye a superhero? I don't think he's a superhero. Yeah, I don't think he's a superhero. Everybody else is pretty good though. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I'm anti-Hawkeye because Jeremy Renner, great guy, he looks, he's great, yeah, but I just don't believe in Hawkeye. I don't, I don't get it, but it's just me. Anyways, we're connecting these members so they feel connected ultimately. And finally, or next to finally, excuse me, we organize the data. And this is not the most fun thing in the world. And for those of you that were my breakout sessions, I gave you something else to use, but one thing we can do for free is use Google Sheets. Uh, and we just digitize everything. If you have conversations with people, you've gotta write it down. You've gotta write it down. It's the only way you're gonna remember. And if I'm really recruiting for ACC, and this time I just have five people, I'm still gonna forget people's names with just five people. But imagine if it was 10, 15, 100, right? It's just gonna be too many to remember. And so we have to keep notes on individuals. I recommend using something free like Google Sheets. There's a bunch of CRMs out there, customer relationship management tools. Uh, but really, Google Sheets will, will cover your bases for free and you'll be in really good shape. And then there should be a real list of your, of your activists. Uh, and so if you have an ACC club and you're the president or a branch and you're, and you're the leader and you don't have a spreadsheet with everybody's name on it, that's another big action item. Let's make sure we've got everybody categorized so we know who exactly is on our, who exactly is in our club. And then I would make a marker of like who is actually active in our club and define that. An active member of ACC is someone who has been to our meeting, at least been to one meeting in the past three meetings, right? 
and then now we can see who's active, who's not, and then touch base with people that are not active. But the only reason I'd be able to do that is because I have a spreadsheet that's keeping track of it in the first place. And so again, not the most fun thing in the world when I'm like, let's talk about data, let's talk about Google Sheets, but I promise you, you're gonna be a much more effective activist if you use things like this. And then finally, we go to nurture relationships. And nurturing relationships is the most important part of the Bacon Method. Because quantity versus quality becomes quantity and quality. What we're able to do when we nurture connections and relationships is maximize our connections and then connect them. And what I mean by this is we're gonna be eliminating the root cause of attrition. And the root cause of attrition is a lack of connection or a lack of communication. It's always two things, connection and communication. If your group is getting smaller and smaller every meeting, then there is a lack of connection or communication, right? And if you do have both of those things, your group is likely growing. So I wanna do a visual just to kind of show what I'm talking about a little bit more. And right now, let's imagine that I've recruited people on a list, those 10 people, right? I've got five people now that have made it through this whole process. Um, and I've got AB right now. Well, right now what we have is a dyad. I've recruited them to my group. And maybe I put them in the Facebook group, but person A doesn't really know person B, person B doesn't know person A, they just know that I recruited everybody. And this dyad is not gonna work. Uh, and what I would prefer you use are triads. Very simple, we've got Tom, we've got Mary, and now Tom and Mary know each other, Mary knows that Tom and I know each other, and Tom knows that Mary and I know each other. It's just a simple thing of connecting people together, we're creating triads. And so if someone comes to your group and they came because of their roommate or they came because of their friend or their boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever may, that may be, by the time they leave that meeting, it should no longer be a dyad. I came because of this person. It needs to be triads. We need to connect everybody to everywhere and make them feel like they are truly connected. And then we will communicate with them and they won't leave our group. So we're, triads are transformative and very, very powerful. Now, if it was really just about getting people to an event, Dyads would do the trick. There'd be a way for me to, you know, put a gimmick together, manipulate you enough into putting your name on a sign-up sheet, and then maybe get you to one event. But this is about building a real, sustainable organization. And if we're building that, we are using triads, because triads relate people and eliminate attrition. They're transitive because everybody knows each other because we've made a point to make it so, it's scalable because it's gonna grow naturally and connect to other networks, right? That's us working with partner organizations. You know, all of a sudden, you know, the president of the college Republicans decided to join our group or the president of the college Democrats decided to join our group. And now people from their group are coming into our meetings because it feels like more lively and more fun, right? It connects to other networks because of the people that we're connecting. It's sustainable because it grows and thrives independently of you. If you implement this practice among your leadership, then people will always know each other and you won't be the only one recruiting everybody to be a part of your group all the time. And of course, it's ready to mobilize. Moving one person to action pulls everybody else into taking action with them. It's kind of like, uh, this is a bad example. Nah, I'll go for it, I'll go for it. I don't know, I haven't practiced, I haven't practiced this, so we'll see how it goes. But it's kind of like, if you're, if you're friend, if you've ever been in like a situation where you've seen this, and maybe it's from a movie, not even in real life, but one person like all of a sudden like gets into a, a scuffle or a small fight, and then you see all of his friends just like they all start coming down there and start running and helping him, and all that good stuff. I, I feel like in essence that's kind of what it feels like when it's ready to mobilize. If one person says, "I'm going to this event," everyone else is like, "Okay, well, we'll go too. That sounds like fun. CPAC sounds great. ACC Summit, yeah, yeah, let's go, right?" Moving one person to action pulls other people in. Again, I'll work on that skit. It'll be better next time, I promise. Okay, uh, so we eliminate attrition by connecting our connections. So here it is just one more time, but now we've got a lot more people, and we have uh, six people in this example, and right now we have dyadic relationships. We've recruited everybody to our organization. They said yes to showing up. They come to our meeting, and you, the leader, decided to make triads. Now, everybody knows each other, and everybody knows that we know each other and we instill this practice inside our organization. We're gonna have something that really will succeed for the long haul. And again, as we have our leaders implement these same practices, the most important thing, especially if this is a college scenario, is eventually you're gonna graduate, right? You're gonna move on. And even if you're not in college, sadly, you will move to another state. 
You will get a significant other. You will have a child, right? You'll get hit by a bus. You'll get Regina George, right? Anything could happen. Any, anything could happen. But if you created triads, this organization will still exist after your departure. And other individuals can tap into it and leverage that network for success. And so I challenge you to create triadic relationships so that your organization exists beyond your tenure at whatever college you may exist at. And truly, the mark of an educated leader, the mark of a successful leader, excuse me, is someone who can create something like this. And after they leave, the organization is still independently thriving and moving. They're just the ones that kicked the tires in the first place and got it going. A lot of good examples of that one. So how do we stop attrition and nurture relationships? We build scalable, sustainable triads, which eliminate those dyads. And the ways we do that is just maintain relationships outside of official meetings, events, and asking people to help you, right? Uh, schedule regular social events, like what are we doing tonight, right? Maybe you wanna go bowling, maybe you wanna get a cup of uh, coffee, maybe you wanna uh, see the monuments, right? Create triads and bring people with you and you're gonna form real relationships. Schedule those regular social events outside of what you're doing with ACC. And then consistently acknowledge the group as a whole and the top performers within it. And you're gonna be in really good shape for success at the end of the day. So follow up quickly and consistently to nurture these relationships. We build the lists, we had 10 people, we activated them, we got five people, we connected them, we've organized the data so we know everything about them. And if we nurtured the relationships right, we have a thriving ACC branch that now we go back out and build a list, whether it's membership, tabling and recruitment, or online efforts, we're just gonna keep making this group bigger and bigger, but no one's gonna leave because of connection and communication. They are connected to everybody else, they don't feel like a black sheep, they don't feel like they're in the wrong room, and they have, they're communicated to. They know when the next meeting is. They know the expectations of ACC. They know um, what they signed up for. Connection and communication. And if you do this right, it's a self-reinforcing, virtuous cycle because they're gonna invite their friends over and they're gonna say, hey, you know, one friend will be like, hey, do you wanna go out tonight? And like, sorry, I've got this ACC cleanup tomorrow, but you should come with me. Oh, what's that? What's ACC? Well, let me tell you, right? They come to the cleanup, and now when they come to the cleanup, by the time they leave this cleanup, they've got 10 new friends and they're all really good people. They've shared contact information, maybe they liked each other on social media, and the next cleanup, you bet your bottom dollar they're gonna show up because of how much fun it was the first time. But that started because we created triads and made an instant practice of creating that inside of our organization. So I really challenge you to do that because you never know when you're gonna find the next Liberty leader when you bring them the bacon. And that's why I really urge you to use the bacon method because we are going to build lists, activate contacts, connect, organize, and nurture. And your organization is gonna be sizzling. Yeah, that was really bad, that was really bad. All right, last one, last thing, last thing, last thing. All right, one last thing online, just review your strategy. So this is for the people that already have an organization going. I want you to audit yourself right now. Just a five quick checklist. Number one, top level. What are you trying to get accomplished on campus this semester? What are you trying to press? How many people do you want to recruit to your organization, right? What are those top level goals? Remember that they're all independent of a social media channel in some circumstances. What I mean by that is if, like for example, if my job was to get elected, I'm running for office, I'm gonna use Facebook to, to, to promote ads and get out there. But if Facebook goes down, my job is still to run for office and get elected, right? And so these top level goals are independent of uh, channel and we are trying to accomplish them. And what digital measurements or measurements in the real world are you using, right? What are we measuring? Next is channel level, online. Um, what's the audience that you're reaching on these platforms? So I'm talking TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it may be. Um, whatever channel that we're on, what's the audience we're reaching? What's the content that we produce that's the best fit? And what actions specifically do you want your audience members to take? Third, we're gonna set time periods, right? Weekly, monthly, quarterly, and who are the decision makers? And I really would write this down. In one week, how many more members will you have a part of ACC? In one month, how many activism events will you host? In one semester, what will you have accomplished? We have to write this down if we want to achieve these goals. Otherwise, it's some nebulous thing where it's like, I hope we accomplish this someday. That would be a great idea. But if you set time periods, now it's been a month and we're not where we need to be, you can make those small incremental changes to be successful. 
And that's all innovation is. It's not a bolt of lightning. It's small incremental changes in the right direction. But you're not going to make those changes unless you set time periods. So make sure you set time periods to measure and review your ideally success. Number four, review and improve. So now that we've set those time periods, we looked at the measurements, we looked at what we did in terms of experiments, and we start to move from there. You know, maybe one experiment was we were on Facebook, we tried doing Facebook Live every Tuesday. We looked back at it a month, Facebook Live didn't pay off for us. How about we try doing this on Instagram, right? And now we start to move, right? And then we eventually will develop best practices and case studies. And then fifth and finally, we just met, we set SMART goals. Now, I did not create this, um, but I use it every day in my life. Your goals have to be SMART. And by SMART, they need to be specific, right? Does uh, increase engagement mean you want 10 new followers or 100 new followers, right? We want to be specific with our goals and be able to measure them, which is the second part. We need to be able to measure. Improve customer service is a great idea, but if I can't measure it, then how am I supposed to improve it? It needs to be attainable, right? Your goals should be audacious, they should be big, they should require you to stretch. But at the end of the day, you should be able to reach them. They need to be relevant to our organizational goals. Always think about what is the mission of ACC and are the organizational goals of my branch aligned with that? And then finally, time bound. We set metrics, right? Where are we gonna be in a month? Where are we gonna be by the end of this semester? And we're gonna be in a really good position for success. All right, wow. I've spoken for like an hour and a half. This is a long time. I'm surprised you guys listened for that long. You guys are awesome. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Okay, so I wanna close uh, just by saying first and foremost, thank you for being a part of the American Conservation Coalition because your message and its importance has never been more of an opportunity for people, especially young people in this country. You really do have a chance to shine, a chance to thrive. And I'm gonna steal this from my breakout session, so some of you have already heard this, but it looks a lot like Eight Mile and Lose Yourself. There's a really good song there. And in that song, Eminem says something to the effect of, you've got one moment. Are you gonna capture it or just let it slip? And then something about mom spaghetti. But the, 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 the gist of this whole thing is you have a critical moment in time to change the narrative about climate conversations. And if not you, then who? And if not now, then when? So let's take action, friends. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day. Happy Saturday.